Hello, this is Max Drake. I just want to talk to you about um, uh, a little bit of a process that I'm trying to do to do room data sheets. Um, uh, I've talked before about using the, the white feet um, uh, free tool that he's now made free, which is really nice of him. Um, uh, and I'm using it to actually uh, create views. So I'm creating plan views, I'm creating reflected ceiling plans, and I'm just doing a couple of 3D views instead of elevations of all of the faces. Now, the second thing that you can do, so you can create views from rooms. So if we just click on that, you can select all of your rooms. So it's gone through and found all of the rooms, and these ones are in a different phase. So these are in my current phase as they are at the moment. And from this tool, you can then make plan views, RCP, reflected ceiling plans, 3D box and 3D crop and 3D box crop things. So what I've ended up doing is making one set of 3Ds from one direction and then the other one from the opposite corner so that you can actually look both ways through. So at this point in time I've actually just been making uh, rooms from uh, one through to things I've been playing with the numbers on them here and I've actually I think just been spitting them out to Excel modifying the room the, the drawing names or the, the, the names of the sheets and then pushing them back in again so here's one of the ones that I've got anyway I'm actually just getting through the last knot now I've got number 27 and 28 so I actually only want to do up to 26 so I'll do that um, and I, sorry, I, sorry, that's not there. So if I just go back into those white feet tools, I've created all the rooms. So all the rooms have been done. Now what I can do is I can create sheets from rooms. So therefore I'm going to create sheets from room 21 through to room 26. And I'm going to have them so that sheep name has a prefix, which is DS1, which is data sheet 1. And again, I've modified some of those to see what I wanted to. And I'm just going to create the sheet. So bang, just doing that, it's just going to create the seven sheets. Nothing happens until I click on that, and then you see they pop through there. Now, what actually happens in this, for some known reason, my floor plan goes miles away from where my sheet is. And it's where I set them up, um, the location of where that comes in. Um, Oh, sorry, and if we just go back to the other one, you'll see that you can choose a particular title block that you want. So I think my title block reference is not the same as the sheet reference. Anyway, I'm not too bothered about that. Now, again, part of the thing with this is actually just doing uh, just some room data tag uh, with some information on the room data. And I've talked about this in another video, so I don't want to talk about that. Um, the deactivate room, I want to tuck that into the thing. This is just an A4 sheet just because the client only has A4 printer. It's just we're sort of doing it on the uh, slowly. Now, the other thing that I've generated on all of those, so you can see I've got reflected ceiling plans of all of the ceilings, and I've got my 3D views, and I've got two lots of 3D views, one beginning with zero and one beginning with one. So what I've been doing up until now has been quite tedious. Is First of all, I'm dragging in the the, the um, reflected ceiling plan, and it's at the wrong scale. Oh, sorry, it's at a smaller scale because I don't know how big my floor plan is going to be. If it's a big floor plan, I need, need to scheme it. Otherwise, I can actually, just because of my view template in here, um, I can actually, um, I've made them all before, I can actually make it bigger so that it aligns. I've got enough room on this sheet so I can actually do that. I would then have to come through, grab the 3D plan, do that once, and then I'd actually have to go through and grab the other 3D plan, bring those in as well. A bit of a bloody nuisance, really. Um, well, actually, I'll just bring one in just to explain another thing that I'm doing at the moment, um, 21. So I just drag that in and get in there. And one of the things that I'm doing with that, again, if we've got room to make them big. Now, once uh, I'll bring them both in, actually, just to, to do this one. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, so I've got a little slightly better workflow than that. The other thing that I've been doing is I've actually just been going in and selecting items um, in here and in this particular view here. Um, override graphics by elements in there and uh, service transparency make it 90. So what I'm trying to do is show what's inside that room. Now it's basically a lot of room uh, data sheets you'd actually do all four elevations inside. To get through that what I'm actually just trying to do is um, uh, just use three um, the 3D perspective to do that because it's not you, you know, you do it for hospitals and things like this. This has got a couple of complex rooms, but generally indicative you can just show all of the items and where they relationally are. 
doesn't need to be that critical at this point in time. So we're overriding the graphics again. I'd like a little script that I can actually do this a bit more inf inf uh, efficiently to tell you the truth. But anyway, that's there. So now I can actually look through and I can see the elements in those rooms um, and in the plan view, uh, I can put room tags or, or, or item tags for equipment and things like that. And later on, I can actually also put... Um, uh, uh, and with those there, I let's just go through, and I could have actually had them preset so that they came in. Um, uh, so I've got the the room numbers and things. And I just adjust those accordingly. That and that one, I'd line up because it's the same scale as the one above. And then I've got some information. I've also got some room to be able to put some schedules down the bottom here to save what equipment's actually in that room or if I've got furniture or possibly some other light fittings. The idea being, if because it's on an A4 sheet, I might need two A4s to actually describe the information on there. So that's what it is. But there's quite a lot of fiddling to do with all of that. So one of the things that I was looking for was a different method of doing web. So I'm just going to blow this one here away. Another one that Revit actually says that you can do is that you can go into the view, you can go into uh, view tab, go into the view, and then select the view that you want. And I've got the view there, which I think is the second one. And I can go view 21 there, add to the sheet. So that's another way that I can do it is that I can just do that list and uh, I've still got to change that because I hadn't set it up right. I'm not really bothered. I've sort of been playing. I haven't done this for a while. So that's there. So I've got to bring in that. Then I've got to bring in that. Then I've got to bring in that. Then I've got to scale them. Then I've got to do all of this. And, I've said, and, and the scaling, I must admit, is my fault. I could just regenerate those if I wanted to. But I'm sort of more playing around at this point in time, ready for when the process really kicks off. So if I go to a new room here, what I actually found, oops, sorry, that's just a view. Um, if I just go to a new sheet that I'm actually doing, so the next one too, we go into room 22. Oh, now that's well, that's drifted over to there, so I'm just going to do that. And you see here, I've got a very large room. Um, one way to do some adjustments. And with that, I'm just going to drag that over there. Because the text not aligning right, I'm just going to change that and go and make it the east one. I've talked about this on another video, so look at that one about those. And if I just drag it over here and drag it out again, it comes through. So there's the stuff there. Now I need to bring in the reflected ceiling plan and the other ones. Now what I also loaded up is the Pi Revit add-in, which is a free add-in. I find this really good. I've used the hatch ones through here, the patterns, and I found it absolutely brilliant. Anyway, within views, you can add views to the sheet. So what you actually do is you go and you find your thrones. Let's just go R C and it's going to take me to the RCP and this is 22. So I'm going to go and do that. Then I'm just going to scroll up and oh, I've got that out there. So I just cancel. Oh, I'll clean that. And then I've got to go and find my 3D view, which is 22. I want that one there. See, it's a bit funny with the ticking on this one. There it comes through. It's a bit laggy. And then I've got 20 two on that one there so I've selected all of those three views and I go yes and go and stick them onto sheet 22 select so in fact I don't even think that you need to have them open now you can't see anything there but if I just go ZE there we are they all land they all land on top of each other. Deactivate view. I've gone selected something. Ah. Deactivate view. So I can actually just drag these in. One, two, three. So they bang them on all on top of each other. And then I can actually bring them into that sheet. Now that sheet there is a bit of a pain. One thing that I can actually go and do there is I can go and do a size crop through there. Oh, not a size crop. Uh, if I activate that view, I think... I can go edit crop. So for that one there, I'll most be probably trying to um, see if I can. The other one that I can do is actually just make the plan a bit smaller. Um, 
uh, and then just see if I can drag those ones in. Sorry, just squeeze them into the space that I actually need. And do they fit on the sheet? Oh, almost. Oh, I can shove that across a bit there, and then I can push that up a bit through there. And uh, that's a bit of a nuisance there. Um, but notionally, that's what I need to do. So it's being able to do multiple views. I was looking for a free way of actually putting multiple views onto a sheet. That seems to be the way to do it. So uh, I hope that's been of interest to you. So the two things that I'm using there is the white feet add-ins, which is the white feet tools. And uh, the other one is the Pi Revit architectural add-in one. There's also a Pi Revit HEVAC or one which is I haven't actually got loaded up at this point in time but um, uh, definitely um, worth exploring to actually speed up some of these really tedious processes. Anyway thank you very much for watching. If you like can you please give a thumbs up.